you've been to Cork loads lately. I mean, you were at Mosquery Park only a couple of weeks ago. How yeah. was that for you? It was amazing. Well, it actually rained. Like, probably the worst rain I've ever seen. And now we're back and it's raining again. And we're playing two shows at Westlife in Cork. That's yes. right. Yes. So we're going to just start Airbnb and then yeah, Airbnb stay there. You'll have a Cork accent by the end of the summer. What? You'll have a Cork accent by the end of the summer. I hope so. Go on, give us your best Cork accent. Cork. All right, bye. Here we are. Why do What's the band's name in a Cork accent? Wild you. <laughs> that was really good. That's really good, actually. Thanks. Really good. You, Thank you. Um, so yeah. For more impressions, you can follow my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> we'll put the Instagram handle at the bottom of the video. You can everyone go and follow. We were talking to some of the other acts on the line. By the way, an amazing lineup for an Irish festival. Great to see so many Irish acts on Absolutely. the lineup. I suppose it just shows off how strong the scene is right now, yeah? 100%. Yeah, I think. Uh, Loads of new people, like even Moncrief has, you know, songs all over radio now, and he's playing. There's loads of amazing Irish acts. Yeah, it's, good. it's great to have festivals like this too, where it, it kind is, of is predominantly Irish, Irish, and everyone gets to see all the talent that this shop, country has. Shop local and all that, you know. Absolutely. Guaranteed Irish. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Guaranteed 100% Irish people. Lads, you've got a new single out at the moment called "Live Without You." It is so beautiful. But you, you broke my heart. You made me cry the other day because you posted that video showing your girlfriend for the first time yeah Tell i us did about this moment so you wrote the song about your girlfriend uh, no actually it was a mixture it was connor can explain what the actual story of the song is about but we spend a lot of time on the road and a lot of time away from loved ones and stuff like that so um yeah i showed it to my girlfriend um and for anyone who hasn't seen the video we we're in the car and i played to her to her for the first time and I slightly put the phone up in the corner. And this isn't like, I can't curse on this, can I? This isn't the lie. Uh, she had no clue I was videoing her, so put it up into the corner. Started videoing it, and I have two mics on me now. Started videoing it, and lo and behold, she started crying uh, in the video. Which took me by complete and shock, because like, she's a strong girl, you know what I mean? She doesn't get emotional like that yeah, for no yeah. reason. So then I kind of got a bit upset myself. Like we started hugging in the middle of the trap, in the middle of the foot, in, in the middle of the road, like, Cars honking us to get out of the way, and we're hugging, crying into each other's arms. Moment. Yeah. Yeah, 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 we had a moment. So it was another but yeah, that no, was pretty beautiful. And I sent it to him, and he was like, "We got to put it up." And I was like, "Okay." Oh, so we, we did another, another video of you recently busking uh, in Dublin, yeah. right? Yeah. Going back to the roots a little bit. Yeah, well, I used to busk when I was a kid. Me and Connor actually did it as well at one point together. Um, yeah, so I used to busk when I was a kid in Grafty. Couldn't. So I dropped out of college after one week. Uh, and I used to just go into town then and just busk all the time. I feel like anybody who, who bust has got at least one really good busking story. Because I spoke to Kian De Crow before and he, ha he had a story about being chased by guards and then him chasing somebody else who was after robbing his money. Oh, well, I had people always trying to rob my money all the time. That just comes with the territory, unfortunately. Um, um, but yeah, no, I used to go in there and just busk to get money so I could go out with my friends. So I used to just bring my guitar in, busk, get money and go to the pub in town and... That's how I did it, really. It's just to entertain my alcoholism back then when I was a teenager. <laughs> <coughs> um, Glastonbury was on recently, and there was that amazing Paul McCartney set, uh, which went on for three years. Um, and you know, he brought out Bruce Springsteen and Dave Grohl, iconic moment. You know, people remember forever. In the middle of Wild Youth set on stage tonight, in the middle of the set, if you could turn around and say, "Ladies and gentlemen of Cork, please welcome on stage," and it could be any other artist in the world. Who? Declan alive Learning. or dead? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's do alive and let's do dead. Dead for me would be probably like Prince or something like that, wow. or Freddie Mercury. Yeah. That'd be sick, mm. actually. Freddie, I'd be Freddie. Someone that we could actually. Oh, the water you hit there, did you? Someone that we could actually physically fly in, though. Who would it be if there were still, someone still around today? It's gotta be someone that's gonna I'll say the weekend. Oh, yeah. Uh Tame Impala. Yeah. Oh, very nice. nice. Yeah, yeah, very, very nice. Good. What about Bob together at the weekend and Tame Impala? Yeah, that's a gig. That's For a loud half two. Very on to you. Uh I don't know, is there enough room on the stage? On well, this imaginary stage. <laughs> hey, we'll have to ask we'll have to ask yeah. health and safety if the stage is big enough. We'll have Listen. to contact Shane and see if we can get the boat in. <laughs> Listen lads, have a brilliant gig tonight. Enjoy. Thanks so much.